Okay, what's the deal with, with dairy? Is it, is it good for you? Is it inflammatory? Should we be eating it or drinking it? Have you ever watched Dairy Girls on Netflix? It's no. It's absolutely hilarious. I think there's three seasons. You should. I think that's with an E, though, not an I. It's or a Y. A, it's D-E-R-R-Y? Or? Yeah. Yeah. As opposed to D-A-I-R. Anyways, it's got okay. nothing to do with dairy. But okay. that we're gonna, welcome to Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Paul Zales. I'm Dr. Brad Weening. We're sitting down. We're doing this podcast style just because it feels good to sit down sure. instead of standing all the time. Sure. Sure. And we're going to be talking about dairy and uh, some of the misconceptions or some things that you thought were true might not be true. Sure. First thing is dairy's gotten a bad rap in terms of its inflammatory properties. Is it inflammatory? Right. So in people who are not allergic or lactose intolerant, there are reasonable studies to show that it is not specifically inflammatory. What that means is that there are blood markers that we can measure that go up when you have some type of inflammatory toxin or uh, insult, and it does not typically make them up. And these would be C-reactive protein, ESR, erythrocyte sedimentation rate, and interleukin-6. There are three of the most common ones that we measure. Right, and so apparently in the average person who doesn't have a problem with dairy from an allergy or lactose intolerance point of view, right. then it doesn't cause inflammation. Uh, now the problem with looking at dairy is a few things. One, it's a very heterogeneous collection of foods, okay? Yes. Dairy ranges from a billion different types of cheeses. That's a lot of types. To different milks, you know, different percentages of fat in the milk, yeah. and even which animal the milk comes from. You've yeah. got dairy from sheep, dairy from goat, dairy from cow. So there's a lot, it's a heterogeneous collection. Yep. So it's yogurt. So right there, it's impossible to lump all dairy together as to one type of food. So you're saying is all dairy is not created equal? No, right? Okay. So keep that in mind as we discuss dairy. But in right. general, these kind of studies looked at various dairy products to see if they, if, they, if they contribute to inflammation. One study I looked at was found no association between dairy intake and markers of gastrointestinal inflammation in healthy adult cohort. The thing I love about this article is the whole thing's in the title. I don't even have to read it now. <laughs> No, actually, I did read through it, and then one, the first thing I look at when I read an article about dairy or about anything is the conflict of interest section. Yes. That's always the most important section because okay. this was funded by the California dairy industry. Okay. However, it did look like a good study that did objectively look for inflammation and right. in people who ingest dairy, and it could not find any association. And historically, there have been a lot of studies run by the companies that have vested interest, and the Dairy Board is guilty of this on lots of occasions. And same thing, I, I looked at three different studies where they compared uh, yogurt consumption to a control group for which caused more inflammation. But the control group in the three studies that I looked at, one was, was juice, the second one was granola bars, and the third one was actually cookies. Com compare, but, so this, this is the thing, I think whenever you're reading any type of study, whether it's big farmer, whether it's big agriculture, I think definitely grain of salt and, and look closely at, at whether or not it's a well-run study and whether or not there's a, a specific agenda. Right, and the other thing about dairy is it's everywhere. So in all the foods that you just mentioned, there's dairy. There's dairy in cookies, there's dairy in granola bars. Yeah. There's dairy in just, well, not juice, but there's dairy in just about everything. So you have to keep that in mind too when you're looking at these studies. And um, the other thing is there are a lot of studies uh, that, have pre that preceded these studies that said, hey, look, then people who uh, take in dairy uh, end up getting their hip replaced more often. There are some studies like that that did talk about and, and, and make the leap to inflammation associated with dairy. Okay. Again, these the everyone is every the way everyone reacts to the different dairy products is different. So if you're in the situation where you have a bit of arthritis in your knee or your hip or your shoulder or something, and you find that in your intake of dairy, when that goes up, you feel worse. That could be very real for a variety 100%. of reasons. It could be that you have some kind of allergy to one of the many components of dairy, the proteins the many different proteins that are in there yeah. or different molecules might trigger your immune system slightly to get you inflamed. Um, or you could have an intolerance to the way that you uh, digest the lactose in dairy, which could be lactose int intolerant. Right. So there's a lot of different reasons why when you ingest dairy, your arthritic joints feel worse. It's possible. And right, so the way that we digest lactose is with an enzyme called lactase. And after we get through about age six, so originally, because of breast milk and things like that, infants have the ability to digest this. As we get older, past age six, about 65% of the world does not have an enzyme that allows us to properly digest lactose. And this varies by where you live, 
and what your ethnic background is. So there are certain cultures that have approaching 100% intolerance or absence of lactase or become lactose intolerant. This is not an allergy, this is an intolerance. So two to 5% of people are actually formally allergic to, to milk or to dairy products. So that's very different than lactose intolerance. But yes, lactose intolerance could lead to inflammatory type properties. And that's why elimination style diets where you remove things and then you feel better, help us make a link between those two. Right, and if you are in that situation, you're trying to think, oh, is the dairy bugging me? You could try that, eliminate for a while, then gradually reintroduce it and monitor how you feel and see if there is a difference in how you feel as you gradually reintroduce it. That's one way to test it on yourself. Right. Okay. All right, so in terms of the inflammation of dairy, remember, it's very hard to say anything because there's so many different types of dairy, yeah. one, and two, the studies are, you know, there's some bias in the studies. However, in our review, we yes. couldn't find any convincing evidence that says definitively dairy is inflammatory. Okay, so just because it's not inflammatory, is it good for you? Should you be eating it? Okay, and here's where this video is going to get inflammatory. And, and, and leave some comments. Leave your, leave your thoughts on dairy. Uh, let, let us know what you think. Let us know how you tolerate it. Let us know yeah. if you like it. All right. Okay. So is it good for you? And okay. the flip side of that, or is it bad for you? Okay, so historically, dairy has been promoted um, particularly in North America, by the U.S. Department of Agriculture because they had a vested interest in it. So sure. hundreds of years ago, we didn't really eat a lot of dairy, but in northern Scandinavian countries where the winters were really harsh, those people relied on it more because of the high fat content, and that's why actually a lot of uh, northern Europeans actually have very, very low incidence of lactose intolerance. There are some other different pockets where they consume dairy on a more regular basis, and their genes actually modify to be able to tolerate this. But what happened, um, throughout the 1900s is that the, the government got more and more involved with um, the dairy farmers and allowing them to, to make a living and protect their living by actually sometimes even buying, buying their products. Government, great customer. Government was an excellent customer for any business and they would say that. And what happens, this is where even the, like the government cheese program came on. A lot of rappers sing about government cheese. And what a lot of people don't know is that in the 70s, the government was stockpiling cheese. They had agreed to buy dairy products from farmers to keep um, their businesses rolling. And then there was this cave of like literally millions of pounds of cheese that was starting to go bad. So they said, what are we going to do with all this cheese? So then they started giving it away. And so anytime an industry or a government has, has um, a vested interest in some type of free market, it, it changes the role of that product in society. So we've been told that all of us growing up, right? Mm -hmm. Have a glass of milk. You had a glass of milk with every meal. You had, you had milk all the time. We we're told that milk does a body good. And then eventually, as time passed, we realized you know, maybe milk doesn't do everybody's body good. And that was, that was kind of the, the controversy there. And that's where we are today. Personally, I never drank a bunch of milk. Wasn't never? Into it. No. Because you didn't like it? No, I, I didn't feel good. Yeah, <laughs> I think right. I have a bit of lactose at You're lactose but I, I do like cheese. Uh, sure, and, and ice just... cream, like, right? There's a lot of, yeah. there's a lot of fun yeah. things about dairy. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. why people eat well, it's it. With a lot of sugar added to it, but, but yeah. I, do eat cheese. I, do, I do eat dairy. Sure, so what are the, some <laughs> of the shortcomings of dairy? Like, what are the, some reasons that maybe a dairy is not necessarily a healthy choice? Well, the fat content. You worry about okay. the fat content. Saturated if, fat, particularly. If you're someone who has a predisposition to high cholesterol, the thinking is that if you intake a lot of dairy product with high fat, then you will end up increasing your blood triglyceride profile and it's not gonna be good for you. And interestingly, that's why a lot of these studies are dealt with low fat dairy products is because of the saturated fat. Saturated fat has shown to be inflammatory, so that's why these studies use low fat dairy to reduce the saturated fat to reduce the inflammatory markers. Right. And some studies did show that some dairy products do reduce inflammation as yes, well. Yes, fermented ones. Right, because that overlaps with the probiotic world of science. Yep. Uh, that shows that, and we can check out one of our other videos on probiotics, where that uh, can be good for you, certain probiotics, which can be found in some dairy products. Okay, so saturated fat may be one reason to not consider dairy. Okay, number two. If you have a lactose intolerance or uh, an allergy to it, yeah. it might not be good for you. No brainer. There are some, I think you can actually purchase enzymes to help you deal, like if you love dairy so much that it hurts yeah. you, you can actually yeah. buy the enzymes. Yeah, lactate. It's yeah. commercially available lactate and you there need you to take that. Or the, some milk comes with lactate in it okay. uh, to help you digest that. Number three, we've always been told that milk is a way to develop strong bones. So there's research that shows that Countries that consume the most dairy actually have the highest incidence of hip fractures, which is inverse to what we would intuitively think. And there's a bunch of hypotheses about why this may happen. 
um, it may be related to the rest of the diet, and also some people think that it's the excess vitamin A that's there, but certainly the calcium that you drink in dairy is not protective as we get older to reduce your incidence of hip fractures. Right. One article I looked at, Dietary Recommendations for Prevention of Atherosclerosis. This one, conflict of interest, this one was funded by a food company uh, okay. in Italy. However, they make pasta. As okay. far as I could tell, the company that they are and the companies they own yeah. uh, don't make dairy products. What about the Alfredo sauce? That's not them. Okay. <laughs> That's not them. Okay. Um, olive oil, okay. throw that on your pasta. Sure. So um, they found uh, that after doing reviews of the meta-analyses that are out there that dairy uh, wasn't correlated with the development of atherosclerosis. Okay. Unless you're one of those individuals as a genetic predisposition to high cholesterol and yeah. high triglycerides, then you might have to be careful. But in the general population, they couldn't find a link looking at all the literature that was out there between dairy and atherosclerosis. And atherosclerosis is a disease process that affects your arteries that leads to things like heart attacks and strokes. Right. Okay, the next thing for me for dairy products would be um, the presence of hormones in dairy. Mm -hmm. So uh, in Canada, you cannot give um, growth hormone to cows. Um, in the US, they estimate that one in six cows is given a synthetic type of growth hormone. Um, and now because of the free trade agreement, even in Canada, we're getting some of that milk. So the concern for the Canadian government was that it hasn't been shown to provide significant benefit other than increasing the yield with un unmeasured. We didn't really know the risk long term, mm -hmm. so they said no thanks to that. So growth hormone aside, the other hormones that definitely are present in milk are estrogens. So 75% of milk comes from cows that are pregnant. So these are, not, these are not cows that are given hormones, but because of their pregnant state, they have estrogen in there. And this has been linked to early onset of puberty for, for women, delayed onset of menopause, as well as even related to some type of cancer, particularly prostate and endometrial cancer. So there is an incidence um, of increasing risk due to the hormones that are present in milk. In milk? Yes. All right, so that's one form of dairy. Yes. Um, so what's your bottom line then? Is the bottom line is lots of people love dairy. And I think... Types of dairy. Yeah. Oh, the other thing I'd say before your bottom line is sure. remember, and I think I mentioned this, there is different types of dairy. Very different. Dairy from the sheep, dairy yep. from the goat, dairy from the cow. Sure, lots of different kinds of dairy. A lot of dairy. Yeah, so I'd say the take them is, A, think about why you're, if you're eating it because you like it, I mean, that's, I think that's one thing. I think if you're eating it because you think it's a healthy choice, I think be objective, try to look at what your goals are for what dairy is providing for you, and then see whether or not this is the best way for you to get it. I think there are other sources of, of things like calcium um, and protein. Right, okay. I, I mean, yeah, yeah. I, think, I, I think that's a reasonable bottom line. Um, we couldn't, I couldn't find any evidence that said that all dairy is bad for you. Um, definitely in the blue zones, you know, where they've investigated where people live sure. a super long time, there's some dairy. Yep. But the one thing I always say, it's in moderation. Sure. If you're going to eat a wheel of extra sharp cheddar cheese every day, it's yep. not going to be good for you. In fact, there's nothing I think that we need in abundance or excess, no type of food. The only thing is water. That's really the only thing we need a lot of. Other than that, you don't need a lot of anything, I don't think. So a variety of foods is what I find to be the most healthy. And I think if you are into dairy, in moderation, just like anything else, yeah. I, think, I don't think it's bad for you. And in my opinion, depend, you know, if you don't like some of the other sources of the protein and the vitamins and the vitamin D and stuff yeah. like that, then dairy is good for you in that sense if you can't enjoy taking it in from other forms. There you go. Um, so that's, that's the skinny on dairy. Nice. Do you eat a lot of dairy? Not a ton of dairy, no. but I do eat it. Like I do, I do like cheese. What else do I can yeah. take with my wine? Sure, there you go. So um, yeah, so I do personally. Do you eat dairy? Not really. I mean, no. in a pinch, if I'm at somewhere where they have dairy, then I'll I wouldn't like yeah. walk out of the room because there's dairy there. But I I'm think it's not. I think it's hard to avoid because it, it's it it's an ingredient in many many different products. Yeah, for sure. uh, but unlike something like processed you know, meats, yep. that's something I cut out of my life completely because yep. the evidence there was overwhelming that that's bad for you. Yeah, direct link to cancer. You know what, uh, like something like smoking or vaping, overwhelming evidence is not good for you, don't yeah. do that. You, you could argue alcohol is overwhelming. Alcohol, alcohol, there is overwhelming, yeah. and I did, like personally, yeah. I don't remember we made our video last yeah, year yeah. on New Year's resolutions, yep. I cut out alcohol during the week, yep. and I just saying I'll have it on the weekends. Oh, yeah. It's not cutting out completely, but because of the research that we sure. found that linked it, yeah. I thought, okay, I'm going to reduce it. But for so dairy, cool. I haven't seen anything in there that's going to make me change my dairy habits. Your current dairy habits. Right. There you go. 
If you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel, leave your comments about your experience with dairy. And remember, you are in charge of your own health and in charge of how much cheese you eat. See you next time.